Hey there, Kelly here. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time. If you've been here before, welcome back to my nonsense and shenanigans. Thank you for coming back to spend some time with me. So if you guys have been following me, you know that it's Kelly's world over here. I just do whatever I want to, whatever the mood strikes. So many of you know, um, if you've been following me for a while, that I'm battling lupus. And one of the things that I've learned um, with this battle, it came with party crashers. So there's depression, there's anxiety, there's all these other lovely extras that come with it. So in order to combat that, I've talked about this in other videos, a few things that I've, that I've been doing is teaching myself new hobbies that kind of take me away like Calgon. Um, and one of those hobbies is I've been teaching myself to sew and I've been doing this for quite some time now. But today I'm going to show you guys how to make something useful. So those of you that want to whip out your sewing machines, today is that day. So for many of you, I'm sure that you've been seeing all of these different methods of making masks. I've made my share of masks. I'll be honest with you, I'm burnt out on making them and I'm burnt out on seeing them. So I decided that I would make something different that could be helpful, not only during this situation, but on further into the future. Not that masks won't help that because they do. Um, so what I have made is a shopping cart cover. Oh, look at that, my green screen is taking effect. Can you see through those little fruits? <laughs> those are the green fruits on this fabric, by the way. Um, so I've made a shopping cart cover for the handles on your shopping carts. So you can go in, you can sanitize if you want an extra layer of protection, or if you just don't want to sanitize and you just want to touch your own stuff. So this has a Velcro closure. So it's nice and easy to get on and to get off and it is washable. So this was my little contribution outside of doing masks to the, uh, the pandemic. So let's hop into what you're going to need. Okay, so here are the materials that you're going to need. You're gonna need two pieces of fabric that are cut to 24 on the long end, 24 inches on the long end and eight inches on the short end, I cut my batting pretty much to fit the length of my, um, of my cover. So it's 24 on the long end and seven on the short end. You're going to need something to mark your fabric with as we mark where the Velcro is going to, to be situated. You're gonna need 20 inches of Velcro. You could do this with an open-ended zipper if you wanted to, but I just think that Velcro is just a lot easier. You're also going to need a, something to measure with because again, we've got to figure out exactly where our Velcro is going to fit on our fabric. You're going to need some fabric scissors and you're going to need your pins, okay? and you're going to need your sewing machine. Yay! That's the fun part of this project, if you will. So these are your fabulous materials. Let's get started putting this together. Okay, so first things first, I would advise you to pre-wash your fabric. That way any, sh any uh, shrinking and all of that good stuff, warping if it may happen, has already occurred. What I'm using is a piece of cotton and a piece of thin flannel. So these are what I've selected and they have been pre-washed. Now when you're putting your Velcro on, you want to make sure that you're putting it on the right side of the fabric. So the pretty side is where you're going to put your Velcro. Also remember that when you're sewing this on, you're going to need to separate them because one piece goes on your lining and one piece goes on your, um, your pretty fabric. So what I'm going to do is I want these to be about two inches in from my edges and about an inch up from the bottom. So I've got my ruler here and I'm gonna lay this out to where my ends, my edges are even here. So I'm lining up the bottom here and I'm up an inch and I'm gonna go over here at the two inch mark and I'm gonna mark this 
so that I know that that is where my Velcro needs to lie, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna go up an inch and then over two inches and mark my fabric. All right, so let me show you those marks. So I just did like a little square there that the Velcro will fit inside of. So I'm going to take my Velcro and lay it in those little squares so that it's even. And then I'm going to pin this down and then I will be right back. Okay, so now we have pinned the Velcro on uh, both pieces of fabric to the pretty side of the fabric. Let's head to the sewing machine and get these stitched on. Get ready to get to the edge of the Velcro. Instead of picking your needle all the way up and cutting your thread, you're just going to drop the needle into the fabric, lift the foot, and then turn your project. So now you've got your Velcro on the pretty side of each of your fabrics. Now it's time to put this together so that you can stuff it. Now what you want to make sure to do is not to have the Velcro facing the same direction. They're going to go in opposite directions so, the, um, so that they can snap together when they are wrapped around the shopping cart. So you're going to put your pretty sides or your right sides together and we're going to pin all the way around and we're going to leave an opening of about two to three inches here in order to be able to stuff our batting in. So let me get this pinned and then we will come back to the machine. All right, so now I've got the entire project pinned. One of the suggestions that I will make to you because sometimes I forget and I just keep sewing and I will enclose the whole thing and have to get that lovely seam ripper out is notice that I have my pins primarily going where the heads are coming up out of the fabric, but where it is that I'm supposed to stop and leave the opening, I've got the pins in sideways so that that is an indicator to me that you don't sew past this point. So let's grab the sewing machine and let's go ahead and get this squared away. Okay, so I am doing a half an inch seam allowance. I'm pulling out that first sideways pin and I'm gonna do a quick back stitch.
now we're back at that, that next sideways pin. So I'm going to sew in a little bit and then I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch to reinforce. Now we're just going to trim those strings. All right, and also I'm going to trim the uh, corners off here so that we don't have quite as much bulk in those corners and those corners will push out and pop out really nicely. And take some of this seam allowance off as well. Again, this is just going to eliminate some of the bulk. Make sure when you clip those corners that you do not clip into where you have stitched or you have a lovely little hole there. Now I like to do the half inch seam allowance because it gives me enough space for situations where the fabric isn't even like. All right, and I'm going to leave this for now, the long, the end that has the opening in it. So I'm not going to cut off any of the seam allowance on that so that I'll have more fabric to catch once I stuff the batting inside. So now we're just going to take this and get all of this out of the way and flip this inside out. It's looking good so far. So now all we've got to do is push our corners out. Now some people like to use scissors, their fingers, they have a turner tool. I use those chopsticks that come from the grocery store because I'm cheap and I um, know that I can get these for pennies. So I actually buy them off the shelf at the grocery store. See how nice that corner is popped out of there? That's all we're doing is pushing out corners right now. All right, so we are almost there. As you can tell, once you stuff it, when you go to close it, it will look like this. All right, so let's put our batting inside and see what we get. And make sure this isn't twisted inside or else it will definitely look really bulky um, and it won't look neat. All right. And make sure you get those fuzzies off of the Velcro if uh, any of your batting got caught up in there. All right. So now we're just going to take that opening. We're going to fold that inside. And this is why I like to leave a little bit. I like to leave the, the extra bulk in the seam allowance for this to make 100% certain that it gets caught up in uh, when it gets, when we go to top stitch. So I'm just gonna pin this. 
All right, now I've got that opening pen closed. And a lot of people will start kind of right here where the opening is. I tend to like to still start on the ends for whatever weird reason. But you do whatever it is that you do, what, you know, whatever makes you comfortable. So I'm just going to slide that in the machine. And then I'm going to try to get this as close to the edge as possible. So I think I'm looking at about a, hang on a second. Let me grab my magnifying glass and make a lot of noise because my glasses need glasses. So I want to see where I am. It looks like it's about one eighth of an inch um, that I'm going to be marking my fabric or sewing my fabric. And just make sure you roll those edges so that the fabrics aren't um, intermingled, so to speak. And now we're just going to trim our threads. And our project is complete. Nice and easy, really cute. And then you just take it to the grocery store, put it on the grocery cart, and close it over. And now you have your own barrier against extra germs that you're the only one touching. When you're done with this, you can take it and toss it in the wash. I bet this is better, huh? <laughs> okay, so as I was saying, now you have a way to keep your hands off of the hand cart directly, the handle uh, directly, and it is where you can toss it in the wash, and it is um, obviously pretty easy to make. It's just one giant stuffed rectangle. I think the trickiest part of this is the Velcro. So let me say this, two things. One, if you've been here before and you're like, what in the world is going on? Know that sewing tutorials will not be a normal part of the regimen around here. But I posted one of these in um, a couple of my sewing groups and people got really excited about them. So I thought I should probably do a video on them. I do share some sewing lessons on fun um, home decor and useful things. Um, but that's on Skillshare and I will put the link in the description below for that if you are interested in checking out um, what I'm doing over there. And uh, yeah, so next time we'll be back to our regularly scheduled program. But if you decide to make these, let me know how they turn out. Um, tag me, or uh, tag me. Let me know where I can see pictures because I like to check out the different fabric choices that people use. They fascinate me because there's so many different varieties. But outside of that, um, if you have not subscribed, make sure you do that. I would love to see you back here again for more of my nonsense and shenanigans where I talk about a little bit of everything in this lovely thing called life. All right, guys. Thank you for spending some time with me. I will see you next go round. Have a good one. Ciao.